and welcome to Stories and Stuff. Today we'll be reading Little Red Riding Hood. Once upon a time, in a cottage on the edge of the woods, lived a little girl and her parents. She had a name, but everyone called her Little Red Riding Hood on account of the red hooded cape her grandmother had made her and which she always wore. One morning, Little Red's mother called her into the kitchen. Your dear granny is sick, mother explained, and I need you to take her some things to make her feel better. Little Red helped pack up a picnic in her shopping basket. Her mother gave her three warnings. Stay on the path. Don't talk to strangers, especially the big bad wolf. And go straight there without stopping. Little Red nodded, picked up the basket and set off down the path. The sun was shining brightly as she left the garden and entered the woods. Little Red shrugged to herself, there was no one watching and mother would never know. She stepped off the well-worn path and wandered amongst the trees. It grew darker as the forest became more dense. She shivered and pulled her hood up over her head. Suddenly there was a movement beside her. It was a flash of grey and there before her was a wolf. His eyes flashed yellow and he smiled, revealing canines as sharp as knives. Little Red remembered her mother's warning and a little shiver ran down her spine. She took a deep breath and introduced herself. The wolf was much nicer than he looked. He wondered if Little Red was lost and needed some help finding the path. When Little Red Riding Hood told him about Granny, he seemed very concerned about the old lady. Why don't you pick some flowers to cheer her up? He suggested, pointing to the pretty bluebells growing at the foot of a large oak tree. Little Red picked a handful of the pretty flowers and when she had placed them carefully in the basket, she stood up and looked around. The wolf had vanished. Hoping she hadn't said anything to upset him, she wandered back to the path and on to Granny's house. Meanwhile, the wolf sped off to Granny's house. He knocked on the door, pretending to be the little girl. Granny, can I come in? He said. Yes, dear, Granny replied. In he went. Poor Granny nearly jumped out of her skin when she saw him. He chased her round the room, but she dived into the wardrobe, pulling the door shut behind her. In her haste, Granny's frilly cap had fallen off her head. So the wolf pulled the cap over his ears, got in bed and pulled the blanket up to his chin. He couldn't wait for the little girl to arrive. When she knocked on the door, she was surprised at how croaky Granny's voice was. She entered the darkened room with the curtains drawn and crept towards Granny's bed. Poor Granny didn't look herself at all. Her face looked grey and her eyes were yellow. She took a step closer. Granny, said Little Red Riding Hood, what big eyes you have. All the better to see you with, my dear. Granny, what big ears you have. All the better to hear you with, my dear. Granny. What big teeth you have! All the better to eat you with! She took a deep breath and screamed at the top of her voice. A passing woodcutter heard the commotion and threw open the door. To his astonishment, he found a wolf in a pink frilly cap and a nightgown, chasing the little girl who was making all the noise. He sprang into action, bringing down his axe on the wolf's tail. The creature howled in pain as the end of his tail was cut off. He ran from the house, and was never seen again. Once the woodcutter had calmed the little girl and let her poor granny out of the wardrobe, they shared a cup of tea and some of mother's tasty red velvet cake. Little Red was relieved, but knew she was in for a telling off when she got home. The end. <laughs>